In the summer after my third year of undergrad, I contacted nine principal investigators at SickKids Hospital and heard back from one. Thankfully, I nailed the interview, granting me the opportunity to be a part of the SickKids summer undergraduate research experience in the summer before I got into medical school. What did I do to maximize my chances of getting into the SickKids summer research program? How did I structure my cover letter and CV to highlight my accomplishments and skills without coming across as desperate or arrogant? And if you're looking to get involved in summer research, whether that's at SickKids or somewhere else, what can you do to stand out from the crowd. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Darren and I'm a resident doctor based right here in Ontario. In today's video, I'm going to be outlining five tips for you to consider if you're interested in getting involved in scientific research as an undergraduate student. If you're applying for a formal research position this year, such as the Sick Kids Summer Undergraduate Research Experience or, or really any other formal program, uh, we would love to be able to help you out uh, by reviewing your cover letter and CV. Uh, do give us a shout at canadianpremed.ca and we'd love to get in touch with you. Tip number one is to understand their perspective. Now, I'm sure this may not come as a surprise to many of you, but principal investigators can get hundreds of emails a week from first, second, and third year undergraduate students asking if there's any availability for research positions in their labs. Now, for many pre-medical students, they view these research positions as something to add to their resume or something that would look good in a medical school application. Uh, but really, most principal investigators are actually looking for students that they can develop long-term relationships with. So say you volunteer or you apply for a research award in their lab during the summer of your second year or third year of undergrad, will you then continue on to do an honors thesis project Project, potentially a master's or even a PhD. Now that's not to say that you can't be interested in basic science and want to go to medical school. Many applicants do and you know myself included. That being said I think it's important to note that you still need to be open to a potential change of directions in career. For example doing a master's uh, should you not get into medical school the first year that you applied and, and be open to having that discussion with the research supervisor uh, when you do eventually get to that stage. Tip number two is to read up on the principal investigator's work. Once again, these principal investigators get thousands of emails every single month for students asking them for research opportunities. And one way to really make yourself stand out is to actually go in, look at the areas of research that that principal investigator is interested in, potentially look at some of the methods or resources that they have in their lab and what you'll actually be doing should you become a research assistant in their lab. And basically just summarize it and express your interest in whatever area of work that the lab does, which is most interesting to you. People like to feel like they're being reached out to specifically. And although you may be doing this exact same process for many different principal investigators, at least having that element of specificity sends a signal to the principal investigator that you've done your homework and you're interested in their lab for very specific reasons rather than just uh, wanting to have a, a research position wherever will be able to have an opening at the time that you're applying. Tip number three is to pick a field that you're interested in. Once again, researchers are, are generally interested in forming long-term relationships and it does take a lot of time, effort and, and resources to train up an undergraduate student with no prior research experience to eventually become proficient in the lab and actually produce meaningful research. So if you're able to reach out to a lab, let's say in biochemistry and you're a biochemistry major, they're going to see that as favorable because maybe you stick on to do an honors thesis project, maybe you stick on to do a one or two year master's degree and you know potentially even a PhD. Um, but they know that if you're reaching out into something that is related to your major or your specialization from whatever degree program that you're a part of, that there's that potential there that they will then be able to benefit from the, the work that you produce as part of later projects uh, that you stay on to participate in throughout your education. 
educational career. Tip number four is to take research courses. Now, if you're in a medical science, life science, or any other type of science degree right here in Canada, there's probably going to be some second or third year research courses that you can choose to participate in even before you get to your honors thesis project. These courses can be a really good way to show that you are genuinely interested in research even if you have no prior experience because you'll be able to learn techniques that may be applicable to whatever research positions that you're interested in applying for. And once again, because principal investigators know that they have to dedicate time and energy into training you up in actual wet lab techniques and statistical analysis, if you already have courses that have taught you some of those techniques, such as statistical analysis or potentially wet lab techniques that you would use practically in the lab on the day to day, they know that you already have those skills and so it won't be about teaching you from the ground up but rather just refining the skills that you already have to make you more suitable and productive for the laboratory environment. Tip number five is to be honest. When you sit down with the principal investigator and are having your interview with them and they ask you what your potential future career goals are, if you're interested in going to medical school, you need to tell them that you eventually want to go to medical school. Now, that's not saying that they won't ever take you or they're only looking for people that are interested in doing a master's or a PhD or want a pure academic research career. But when it comes time to asking your professor for a reference letter or even just letting them know that this is what you're doing as the next step of your career, it's important that you have already had that discussion up front with them. Otherwise, that's going to create bitterness and resentment and just hard feelings between the two of you that are not going to be good for your career, your reputation, or for, for any, any aspect of, of anything. It's just not going to be good if you're not up front with them about your intentions. That being said, you don't have to leave it at that. You can let them know that although you are interested in applying to medical school, you know that it's very competitive and you are willing to do a master's degree, you're open to doing a master's degree, potentially other graduate studies, uh, should you not get in after your third or fourth year when you apply. Uh, so once again, do be honest about your career intentions, but you can still hedge those bets uh, by letting them know that you're still open to a at least short-term career in research uh, while you are applying to medical school. Dear Dr. X, your work on platelets is of interest because of the clinical relevance blood clotting disorders have such as ischemic stroke and arterial plaques. Being one of 10 biochemistry students to complete an independent third year research project at the University of Western Ontario, I am confident in my abilities to thrive in a research opportunity under your supervision. After being granted the opportunity to work in a biochemistry laboratory aimed at elucidating the regulatory mechanisms controlling cellular growth and survival, open bracket Dr. Wise Lab CCV4 award details close bracket, I gained the analytical, organizational, and communication skills necessary to produce meaningful research. By optimizing a cell line characterization protocol, I learned the importance of precise record keeping, statistical analysis, and appropriate presentation of my findings. Everything from the confluency of my cells in tissue culture to the magnification of my immunofluorescent microscopy images was carefully documented. However, outcomes do not always go as predicted. Through trial and error, I gained an appreciation for troubleshooting, retracing my steps to find the source of the problem, and often finding ideas I was not initially looking for. For example, although I was tasked with determining the homogeneity of exogenous protein CK2 alpha expression in a stable cell line, I also discovered that expression of exogenous CK2 alpha reduced endogenous CK2 alpha abundance. Presenting these findings in the form of a scientific manuscript and an oral presentation to the department sharpened my written and spoken communication skills. However, none of this would have been possible without the support of my lab mates. In Dr. Y's lab, we recognize that each individual project serves a larger purpose, tethering us together. Thus, we are always willing to collaborate on seemingly 
uninterpretable results. But these interpersonal skills extend beyond the laboratory. As a youth volleyball coach, I maintain relationships with my players, other coaches, and the parents. These skills come full circle when I walk into the lab, making me a light-hearted individual when appropriate. My combination of analytical, organizational, and interpersonal skills make me the ideal student to thrive in a dynamic laboratory environment. I will continue to expand upon my technical skill set and produce meaningful research. Thank you for reviewing my application. I would love to interview with you as a follow-up and look forward to hearing from you soon. Sincerely, Darren Chai. Thanks for watching the video everyone. If you're interested in seeing how I got my first research position without any previous experience, I'll leave a link to that video at the end screen of this one. But in terms of this video, that's all I got for you. So once again, thanks for sticking around. Do hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.